Hello, this is Michael Campbell with Glossica, and I'm honored today to be able to sit down with Professor Tim Keeley, who teaches cross-cultural management here in Japan. And it's it's an honor to, to be here and meet you in good person. Good to meet you, yeah. And, and what's really amazing about uh, Professor Keeley is that he has experience with over 50 languages from around the world and speaks many of those fluently. And he's an expert on Asian languages, but not only that, because he's also a teacher of cross-cultural communication in business. So I'm curious to know, along with our audience, um, what are some of the things that you can share about us, uh, share with us about uh, perhaps communication in Japan and the business context? Because I've heard that the J Japanese are very effective in communication by using indirect speech. Yeah. So um, g give us a real quick introduction to this and let us understand more about it. Okay, that. so let me talk about uh, two concepts first. And one is high context and low context cultures and communication. So this is originally from Professor Hall in the 1960s and he was writing specifically about Japan and Germany in this case, comparing them. A uh, high context uh, situation in general is where you share a lot of background, okay? So uh, the highest context you may get is within your family, uh, close friends, relatives, etc. Now, when we look at a country level, then we can talk about a high context to national culture and a low context or anywhere in between. Japan is a very high context culture. Uh, another example is Korea. And they tend to be a collective societies compared to individualistic oriented societies it's like uh, America or Australia. Um, so, by collectivist society, we mean that it's fairly homogeneous in terms of people's background. It's more or less the same. They may same ethnicity, uh, speak the same language, uh, have the same type of experiences in their education, at work, etc., even though there may be regional differences, okay? But if you look at a place like uh, United States or Canada with many immigrants, you have many different languages being used, many different cultures, and so... And ways of expression. And ways of expression, etc. So you actually kind of need, at a national level, you need a collectivist culture in order usually to have a high context communication because they need shared knowledge, they need shared values, shared norms, uh, in other words, ways, patterns of behavior with that are acceptable by society in, in a certain given situation. Okay, so uh, with that, talking about Japan, that would mean that Japanese, when doing business with one another, have this uh, shared cultural background, um, but it's a background in which there's, I said, a lot of uh, shared knowledge about norms and homogeneity, in other words, uh, not a lot of diversity in behavior and norms, etc. Okay? Um, then you have your, uh, also, your loose collectivists like Thailand, collectivist culture, but uh, they are uh, not as tight as Japan. Tight meaning you don't allow deviation, you don't accept people doing things that are or really deviate from the norm. So I, I notice when I walk down the street in Japan and I'm eating, oh. people get me a lot of oh. looks. I miss so you. I'm, <laughs> I'm deviating from normal behavior. Bushin, bushin. Oh, so I shouldn't <laughs> do that. that so on. No. Okay, I shouldn't you do sh that. You shouldn't be doing that. Um, okay, so so that's an example. So even as a as a even though I I, that's a, that's I look not like a foreigner, that's a general. That's a general. I look yeah. like a foreigner. I'm already getting attention from people, but right. then but I act in a, in a deviant way and I get even more well, attention. Well, yeah, and let's say that a Taiwanese is walking down the street, Taiwanese who... And we love to eat yeah, while we and, walk down the street. Right, and they're doing the same. Um, we are getting used to, my wife will come home and say, oh, I was in Tianjin today, and there were a lot of Asians, and she's referring to other Asians besides Japanese. Okay. And she notices, not by just hearing the speech, but by the way they walk, by the way they move, oh, yeah. uh, whether they're eating in public, how loud their voices are, etc. There's different so, norms that come Yeah, to they definitely uh, stick out. Though Korea, Korean culture is the closest to Japanese culture yeah. of any other culture. Uh, you can see it in the way the language is structured, etc. 
Um, still Korean behavior, sometimes a little bit uh, different, and it's noticed. But mainly it sticks out in case of Asians uh, with uh, uh, the Chinese. Now, interesting enough, though, I've taught uh, EMBA programs in uh, Shanghai and Taipei, and they are very different uh, in their culture. Okay, yeah. uh, so actually, a lot of Taiwanese have Japanese type behavior uh, due to the relationship, which I'm sure your listeners who are from Taiwan definitely know about. Yeah. Um, so they were always ready for class, had read everything. The Shang is, oh, we got this two weeks ago. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I could give you a whole story about how that worked to advantage, but we'll, we'll, look, we'll leave that off to the side and get to, back to the question. I'm going off in all these directions, but at least I wanted to establish with everybody this concept of high context communication and low context communication. And high context communication means that you have a lot of shared values, knowledge, etc., a lot of background history. With so, one a another. follow up here, you just mentioned that Thailand. Thailand has um, less of this. Um, it has uh, a loose collectivist a culture. Loose collectivist. So this means that somewhat more high context behavior when, is acceptable in Thai, Thai culture. Yeah, but when we use the word deviant, let's not <laughs> I say. I I'm not saying it in a yeah, negative it way. Yeah, diverse. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, and I meant that way too. Um, but yeah, they're more accepting. Just like with sexuality in Thailand, you okay. have more openness, gay people, and and right. and, and, and such. Yeah, they're more, they're more, they, they're in between India and China, and you can see that in their culture, okay? And you can see in religion, Buddhism and Hinduism mixed together. So I'm curious, because you, you have the, uh, you know, you have all of this uh, experience with, um, with teaching people about the, the business environment. So do you have specific examples, perhaps, from maybe even in the use of the Japanese language, where this indirect yeah. communication comes across as, um, I'm misunderstood am, am by I, those. Am I, am I actually saying what I'm meaning, or am I saying the opposite of what I'm meaning? It totally depends, and that's why you... First of all, uh, ja, there's another concept in Japanese. It's called uh, tatemai honne. The tatemai is for public consumption. And honne is what you're actually thinking. And you... In the West, when you look at it, you're saying they're being, they're being dishonest. No, they're not being dishonest. It's like a white lie. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, your girlfriend, your wife says, do I look good in this? Or something. And then you say, oh, great, honey. You know, it's a white lie type thing. Okay? Right. Uh, yeah, I'll give you an example of, um, of cases where there's misunderstanding between Japanese and foreigners. And they could even be okay. Asian or Western. Um, so the degree of miscommunication depends on the distance of the culture and some other factors. But one common one is just in speaking Japanese, it's polite that you're an active listener. And my wife sometimes complains because she says something and I don't react. I should, oh. according to her, say, hi, a so ne, a so this ne, hi, ha, mm, mm. And I, I, though I've lived here most of my life, and so I've been speaking Japanese for 38 listen. years, I quiet while I listen, which is a faux pas. You shouldn't <laughs> be doing that. You oh. know, dame, 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 bushin, bushin. Hi. So hi. I have to be an active listener, and I have to right. continue okay. acknowledging what you're saying by some type of so this name. Okay, right. so <laughs> what happens? Well, people are, let's say, we're having a business meeting, okay. and you're the foreigner. And um, so you don't know that much about Japan, and you don't speak Japanese, and I'm saying to you, Mr. Forner, uh, you're explaining your proposal, and I can say, oh, hi, oh, hi, hi, oh, hi, so hi, yes. Uh, so so hi. should I feel like I'm, it's difficult for you, me to so, get through so, to you? So, so the interpreter keeps saying, Because you have tight lips. So, hi. So he's saying, what? What's he saying? What's he saying? He's saying, yes, yes, yes. yes. He's not saying yes, yes. He's saying, I can hear you. I'm listening to you. Oh, okay. That is all he is saying. In Japanese, when I say hi, hi, it only means I heard you. It doesn't mean I agree. Okay? Right, okay. So that's the first, first it's, big it's mistake. It's like saying right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, and, and again, as, that's I, as I was too. just doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just something like, uh huh, uh huh. It's like, uh -huh, sort of like. Uh -huh. it, but we, the way we do it in our culture, like West, a lot of Western cultures, like let's say North American culture, uh, the word we use to respond there is going to give us some pretty good indication of how they're reacting. In Japanese, they, they, they want to hide the emotion there. Oh, right. Okay, but they will, if they're really excited about it, you, you should be able to read it, read okay. it on their face, okay? So, uh, the problem is the foreigners and sometimes interpreters unable to explain to the foreigner 
about the atmosphere, like Kuki Oyomu, they're reading the atmosphere. And so, so on and on you explain it, and the whole time I was, you, you, you were told I was saying yes, yes, yes. And then at the end, I just say, ah, mm, ja, eto, ma ima kara teki kento shimasu. So for now, we're going to take a very positive look at this. Okay. okay, so if that's interpreted to you, you're, wow, this is great. But the interpreter, if they're Japanese, they should know that's probably, that might have been a, uh, just get the hell out of here. We have no time. For it. Oh, that's enough. You know, we're not interested. But okay? I can kind of see from your body language. The you way can, you just but you're, you're the foreigner who doesn't but know Japanese Asia, body language. I've been living in Asia a long time. A long no, time. no, but well, you are the foreigner now. You are not. I'm you're not. not you're not. I'm not Michael allowed. Campbell. I'm not allowed you're to not read allowed this. To okay. You're not allowed to all read right, this. Right, you don't know. Right. Yeah. Okay. That, so I'm using. Non, I'm not using you as who I you are with all your knowledge because that would be crazy because. You, 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 the average, you have similar experience. The average person first coming to Japan cannot read cannot that, body, read that language. body language. They may be able to summon it. Also, I, it depends on I, the Japanese. I think Westerners do have this body language to some extent. Sure, we do. It's not. Come on. It's, it's, it's <laughs> never, as you know, it's never. People exaggerate when they say, oh, it's so different. So I'm, I teach at the Kyushu University Business School. And I have, right now, uh, I teach on Wednesday evenings. And I have about uh, I think 18 or 20 Chinese in my class. And uh, well, I have about uh, 14 or so from the mainland. I have four Taiwanese. Um, I have some Filipinos and such. Okay, so um, when I'm using examples of countries and discussing these concepts, when it comes to the communication lecture, this certain area, no, China is put in much more direct than Japan, much, much more so. And actually, get this. Thai and Indonesians are much more indirect, not much more, more indirect than Japanese. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. That's and Thai, Indonesians. And, and, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And, in, in, and, what, because, and what sort of a context? Not giving negative information. Not negative giving, information. Okay. So a uh -huh. uh, comment would be like Japanese, Boston, Indonesia. Okay, I want you to get this report done by next week. It has to be translated into uh, English. Uh, you can handle that, right? And then not, they don't want to say they can't do it. It's like, and, it's, oh, and it's going to be saying yes, Thailand. So, yes. so, you know, oh, and, and they're not going to really ask you any questions. Okay. okay? And um, so, and even Chinese coach, Singaporean so, won't ask their boss so questions. Are they more likely to default on the? I'm okay, sorry, so not, what not happens? Not default, is, but like not actually finish the job. Right, and because not, they couldn't do it. So the, the Japanese would come back and say, "Why have you done?" And then it's admit time. Well, I really kind of have a problem with. Well, why did you tell me that a week ago when I asked you to do it? You see, couldn't so it, right. in, in 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 Japan, they would be more likely to let the boss know that. That okay, might that, there would that, be be, that would, they wouldn't be up for it. And how okay. would the Japanese person present this problem to the boss? When he's asked, there would be a little bit more open communication. They would say, like, um, first of all, they, you would hear a lot of choto, choto, choto. Uh -huh. okay. The choto in, in okay. Japanese. So choto, choto just means, means, wait a second. A it's, it, but like, choto means idian, but uh, just a little. In this case, it has so many, many possible meanings. meanings. Okay. It was wait a second or, oh, wait, or wait, attention, wait, wait. attention, attention. You know, like uh, I need choto to think sanra. about this for a second. Yeah, you know, uh, when I say choto as a Japanese, you should read that I'm trying to communicate something to you that is maybe a little bit hard for me to com communicate. I'm, I'm trying to say no or indicate there's a difficulty. But you don't want to say and no. so I I it's my now now it's my responsibility. This is high context, high context com, uh, communication. High context. So now the res responsibility shifts for me to find out what's bothering you. Okay. So uh, in US culture, North American culture, some European cultures, you would come out and right away and say, Well, I'm I really don't think I'm able to da 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 but no Japanese is first I, they're gonna also you need this. That's how our team does you it need, in Taiwan. They're, okay. Yeah, you need They just come out and tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you need the groans and the grunts and the <coughs> choto. And then the more the groaning and the grunting and the choto, the more I know I have to dig in deep and I have to give you a way to tell me. So if you're doing a written communication through email, you obviously can't express these kinds of... Uh, uh, no, written, what, communi what written communication in Japanese, you lose quite a lot because also um, in written, it depends on who you're writing more, to. Do they become more... Well, you have to be... 
wow, it's like if you read in communication in French where somebody is saying, my dear esteemed and all this stuff, and there's cases where foreigners think that, like let's say it's a, it's a male that's interested in females and females writing and they think they fell falling in love with the guy or something. I've seen, I've seen that as an example in the cross-cultural communication area. I um, misunderstand. You know, okay? So, it's, no, no, this is just the way we address people. That's how we address you know? yeah, okay. them. Misunderstood it as yeah. love. Right, right, interest. exactly. Okay, so when we acquire language, of course, it's a fantastic tool. Some people are unable to use spoken language, so they use sign language or they use written language. There's many ways to communicate, but language allows us to label concrete things and non-concrete things and show relationships among them, etc., etc., through syntax and grammar and so on and so on. So it's a very sophisticated way of communication. And uh, so, of course, <clears throat> that means we want to know more and more about language in terms of vocabulary and syntax. But if you've done that without knowing the social, cultural context of language, you're going to have some difficulties at times in communication. Right. So I say those people who ignore, and it's hard to ignore the culture, it's, it's if you're reading a novel you get the culture, except if you're watching a TV show in that language you're getting the culture, in interaction you're getting the culture, but let's just uh, balance your understanding about the cultural context and the language uh, vocabulary and grammar. Well, thank you, Tim Keeley, okay. for today's talk. Yes. It was such a pleasure to hear yeah, you. Yeah, the talk same. About. I've been looking forward to being you. I mean, we've, we've been in contact, I guess, on and off for about eight years, maybe, or something yeah. like that.